so uh, good morning everyone so welcome warm welcome to the today's session so thanks to adyan sir today uh, he will be uh, talking about astrophotography and uh, especially uh, milky way in focus and uh, let me give a small introduction on uh, him uh basically he is a businessman having his own firm and uh, he is uh, ex uh, bod of indian schools and uh, now convener in indian school bosha uh, school management committee and also he is uh, one convener or president mind musket group of artists uh he has done or uh, been involved in many photo tours i think even including the brand peterson and uh, even inside the uh, fso group uh, he has been to many uh, including biju uh, i mean there is some uh, and also landscape uh, with the uh, sanak okay so i let uh, adin sir uh, start the session thank you once again thank you libin thank you very much so and then yeah yeah sure so if i click my screen or something like that no. yeah yeah you can uh, start sharing uh, i'm not sharing i'm just uh, discussing right now okay okay so, uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, and all uh, for giving me an opportunity to share my uh, thoughts and experience and all about this uh, uh astrophotography and uh, and now those who are already there with us all are masters in uh, basically in their field as well as in uh, photography and uh, it's only it's a matter of we are just discussing together there is nothing that i can uh, give something more uh, sort of thing and but of course certain experiences we had while we have been uh, going to the photography so that i'm just sharing uh the total session uh, i just uh, intimated uh, libin we'll have uh, starting from 10:15 to almost say, around 40 45 hours we will be just uh, going through these uh, various uh, photo uh, landscape astrophotography we'll keep putting and all, all the on, on on the step by step things on that and uh, maybe from 10 11:15 to 11:30 we can have a question answer like what are the queries what are the doubts what are the things uh, in between we have that let us keep uh, in one shot so that we don't uh, lose time in between that means uh, from 11:15 to 11:30 we'll have this question answer like and from 11:30 to 12 uh, i'll show the post processing what i do okay everybody is expert everybody is doing it so there is nothing new in that but still, still i would like to show what i do and we can have a discussion on that and after that we'll show the some of the uh, photographs which has been taken in uh, oman because we have been for the last two years we have been visiting various places in oman with uh, fso uh, or maybe as a friend group like so i remember uh, we have visited almost 15 places in oman in different places so i thought we can share those uh, uh, i mean experience and location detail and the condition and uh, what is the uh light pollution level of those area those photos are there with some uh, details provided in it we'll have a view on that and after that i would like to show a, a, a one of the, one of my um, time lapse which we, i used to capture during this uh, milky way shooting so each day hardly we'll be getting around 5 to 6 seconds so which is accumulated together i just clubbed it together to a i mean time lapse uh, video which is hardly around 2 minutes i'll show then we have we can have further discussion on it is it okay yes hello okay yes so okay shall okay I, shall i continue then very well, well sir continue okay thank you so basically sky is very interesting to everybody so we have been uh, from the childhood onwards we will be looking to sky so let me open my video one minute now i let go for uh, 
I'll have to go for a screen sharing, right? Share screen. Yes. Uh, post disable attendee screen sharing. Okay, so now I'll go to screen sharing. I don't know how I'll go. My video. Okay. Screen sharing. I'm clicking it. Uh, I'm getting a host disabled attendee screen sharing. So, Livin, you may have to allow me to get into the screen. Okay, let me check. Maybe it's a new security feature. So, uh, okay. okay, yeah, you can try that. So, now I'm on I'm, uh, desktop. Yes. Hope you are uh, able to see, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, thanks to Abdullah he has made my, you know, this. Uh, Presentation. I, I am not an expert. I hardly do, do any time. I, I never did also. So I did something and which was not very good and uh, Livin was very much upset about it. So subsequently, Abdullah took it and he has done it very interestingly and very nice. It is a, I mean, uh, presentation which I'm opening it up. So welcome to Landscape Astrophot uh, Astrophotography Milky Way in focus. So this is the first thing actually. Uh, I have included a few of the photos of our uh, friends. Uh, a glance. Uh, I have taken a lot of support from photophiles. I've been. Uh, I've taken few of the photos from uh, well, the world at night. Uh, Mr. Babak's uh, site and Srivastaji, Biju, Srinivasan, Abdullah Sis, Aravind, Chandan, uh, Disusaji, and one of the photographer which I met in Italy during our uh, Dolomite trip, Analor. So all these photos, I just used it. So I'll just move on. As I said to you, okay, all of us are very much uh, you know, fascinated by the star and night and sky from the childhood. No need to explain all our, all our veterans. So just, I just touch it. Further to that, okay. Uh, in the sky photography arena, I'll took that. Basically it has been divided into three. That's what I understood. One is the photographing of planets like moon, sun, sunsets, all those things. Then comes to the star and Milky Way. That comes in the genre of uh, landscape astrophotography. And thirdly, the deep sky astrophotography, which is a very serious photography, which need a lot of uh, skill as well as equipment. Uh, I'm not into that, certainly. And uh, maybe KK is right now venturing into that. That's what I learned from him. So basically, when it comes to the landscape astrophotography, there are star photography, star trails, shooting stars, meteor shower, Milky Way, and time bluffs. These all are comes in that. I'll move on. In Milky Way shooting, let us focus more on the Milky Way shooting. So I just categorize the whole process of uh, Milky Way shooting plan into planning one, Location hand the second, equipments, which all of us know, reaching to the location on time, uh, exactly on the time, we will elaborate on that. Then the, I mean, physical shooting of Milky Way and post-processing. These are the six category I divided the whole session into. So am I okay? Uh, you are listening or any, any hindrance or anything? I'm not getting any feedback, that's right. Libby? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It's okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, sir, clear here, yeah, Ajay. Okay, thank you, thank you. So in planning, basically, uh, I again subdivided into planning. So we Milky Way visibility window in an year. You know, Milky Way is available throughout the year and Milky Way exists, only the earth is rotating. So when we will get to see the Milky Way, so when we get to see the Milky Way is called as a visibility window. So this visibility window is available somewhere from January to October, or maybe a little bit in the November. This is the time we can see Milky Way by our, uh, cannot say naked eye, but of course we can see like either by camera or maybe in the dark, pitch dark, we can see a naked eye. 
So this is the window generally available uh, for us. When we say for us, is we are in the northern hemisphere of the earth. So those who are in the northern hemisphere, this is the window available for us to see the Milky Way. For southern hemisphere, I don't know. I didn't explore it. Okay. Then uh, before planning, we need to know when we get to see the Milky Way. Secondly, the visibility chart with the help of photographs. Visibility chart is though the Milky Way, as I said, it is available throughout the year, but for us in the Northern Hemisphere, we will be able to see only during this, uh, say January to uh, November. But in during this time also, when we will really see, we need a pitch dark sky to see it, right? So the uh, the schedule of when is that pitch dark sky available is basically the pitch dark sky is available other than suppose suppose we think that we are not in a city we are in a quite interior where there is no artificial lights interference in such case also there are other interference like moonlight and other things so we need to know when the moonlight will not be there to see the milky way so basically all the pitch dark will be available during new moon day maybe three to four days before and three to the four days after new moon day. This is the dark sky available for everybody. So there are certain apps, applications, uh, mobile applications available. One of the uh, one I'm using is Photofields. I think many of our, uh, uh, maybe uh, Srivastavji is using, KK is using, many, many of us are using it. It's very useful uh, photo, I mean, app. It is a paid app, but it's not very expensive around uh, close to 9.9, .9 dollar say around four years but it has got a lot of potential i suggest you one all of you to uh, download it because it has got many many features we'll get into that so with this uh, uh, photo fill application i prepared a uh, visibility chart which i posted in our uh, facebook also so only thing is these charts are available I, 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 we'll get to get into that particular session after a while so i'm just going through all the main uh, headings and finally I'll show the screenshot of what is that uh, visibility chart, how we will uh, we can take all those information. Fine, we'll get into that. Okay, uh, like these photo fields, there are many other apps. So that also we can take support of to identify when we'll be able to see Milky Way for a photo shoot. And the fourth thing which I suggest to you is we are going for a, uh, a, a I mean, photo shoot like it's a, it, it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money and uh, good planning. So we need really to know what type of photo we are going to take. So the, uh, one among the best thing is go and see photographs of uh, the uh, professionals or the people who are very serious into the photography of uh, Milky Way or Sky. So few of them I just mentioned. One is the Babak, I think everybody know he had come here for a workshop around three to four years before, I think three years before, if I'm not wrong, KK was there and Shaheen was there those days. And the National Geographic site and Pinterest and uh, Pointer PX, these are the sites in which we can get a lot of good photos to see. Okay. Now I'll just uh, shift to the other slide. This is Photopill. Okay. The moment you install, we will get a notification in our screen which gives a daily basis notification, like we get a notification of uh, news and other things. So are you guys this... seeing the screen? Yeah, are you, I'm asking, this... no, are you seeing are... the screen? Yeah, no issues. I, can... I am, I am uh, seeing the screen. The... I'm, seeing the... only, only, the... uh, I'm seeing only, only, I'm seeing only Mr. Ajayan. Yeah. So, uh, okay. is it so? Not the screen. No, we can see the screen, no problem. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I want you to see the screen. It's very important. Yeah, yeah, screen yeah, means PowerPoint. It. I'm not seeing the PowerPoint. I think Abdulis is just trying yeah, to yeah, see. The screen is very, easy, very much visible. Yeah, it should be visible. Uh, maybe your yeah, settings yeah, or something. Visible. Just try maybe to be like Abdulis is. Yeah, huh? now he's showing photo fill slide. Yeah, okay. are you seeing the uh, I'm slide? seeing you. I'm seeing you on the screen. Your okay. video. Uh, I think uh, it's your I setting. Bless it. Okay. We, I can see both Ajahn sir as well as the uh, screen. Okay. 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 Uh, seeing? Yeah. Yeah. Done. Done. Yeah, 
because it's very important uh, the screen is seen otherwise you uh, know whatever we are yes, explaining is not it's okay go ahead uh, okay so now after installing the photo fields as i said you will be getting a notification on a daily basis uh, and this, this this the one what i am showing this one this is the notification which i, I took a screenshot on uh, i think 3 4 days before when i prepared it so this gives you the first one sun rising so, so, so sunset 6:30 is the sunset and 5:30 is the sunrise okay uh, when i took the shot it was night time now night time and astronomical twilight it's going when the twilight start when the golden hour start when the blue hour start when the astronomical uh, uh, i mean uh, lighting starts and it also gives when the moon uh, sets and moon rise and this is the galactic hour when we saw this is the one we are looking for uh, milky way so it is giving the galactic core visibility it start from 9:56 pm and it ends at uh, 4 4 am so that means this information we get on a daily basis okay again this is the other feature of the photo field you can plan a, a shoot maybe say you want to go to paris maybe after 3 months and you want to take a, a photo shoot maybe moonlight or visible i mean uh, milky way milky way we cannot shoot in paris because of the light pollution but for a for the for sake of discussion let us so we can really plan with the photo field where you are going to place the camera where, where is which is your foreground what is the coordinate what is the easting and northing all those things and how the milky way will be moving all those things we can plan in that so i'm not getting more into the photo fields i'm just giving an information because it's very useful uh, app. here in oman also we can plan so okay, we are going to wahaiba maybe after three months after two months so where we want to really go where we'll get all those things we can plan so i mean i'm not elaborating further on it now let us get into the photographs of few of the uh, photographers just for the sake of seeing good photograph this is one of the photo i took from photo fields because when i said photo fields they give daily or weekly one or two tutorials which gives a lot of new new things uh, for us to learn and it has got its site wherein we can upload our photos and many things so this is a few of the photos i took from them now this is one of the photo of ian norman and the other one is uh, this is from uh, the world at night babak's site it is very serious site it is giving a lot of information about uh, deep sky photography and uh, astrophotography will give many thing many information about the equipment what we need to use how we use and many things so this is few of the photo from them tun tzel and this again tun so he has taken a different uh, different uh, what you call uh, normally we frame differently but he has got a different approach on the framing and uh, this again uh, ajay talwar one of the uh, serious photographer in that particular uh, site and uh, this is again babak whom we are talking about he is a master in that i think he has made the uh, deep sky and sky photography uh, or astrophotography popular into the people those who are very interested into this and his site is very very useful one should go and uh, read and get information about even here also he is inviting uh, uh, photos for contest and uh, whatever and this is one of his other photo uh, uh, dearly uh, near, uh, i mean really a different uh, approach how to take a photo of uh, milky way again uh, babak's photo with a different uh, approach of uh, photo this is our friend michael i think michael didn't come today but i requested him to join he his photos are so uh, i mean uh, marvelous photos he's taking and the master we uh, we have gone for few of the photo walk with him to ashkara and all this is one of his photo i think abdulaziz was telling this is from sifa right abdulaziz yeah yeah it, it is sifa all the way to sifa yeah, yeah yeah we don't we don't believe that we can get such photos in sifa sifa is very close we will get into that this is our master, uh, Srivastava Ji. He is a master in that. I, I love the, the way he takes a photograph. Okay, we see things differently and he thinks in entirely different way. He, sometimes he looks at a uh, cat's view. I think we can say this is a cat's view. So we don't see this uh, bark or right tree and all in a normal appearance. One of his photos, I'll explain when I get into that. Because his vision is entirely different. I have gone with him for a few of our photo shoots. 
I'm really uh, happy and uh, I have my gratitude for him for guiding us. This is again uh, Sivasavji. This is uh, Daniel Cordan. I think it is from Photopills, I hope. Okay, now let us get into the other area of uh, Milky Way shooting. The second leg of it, it is, it is basically hunting the location. So when we get into hunt the location, there are many aspects we need to really look into. Because we, the planning of uh, Milky Way is, a, I mean, it's not that every day we plan, today even you will go to Coram Park and we will shoot something. It's not we plan that way, plan at least a week before or so. And we always would like to go uh, places where there won't be any light pollution. So that means a long time. So if you do not really plan well, then the whole trip will not be of much use to you. So planning is very uh, important. And out of this planning, this uh, location hunt is another important thing. Now, how do, you, uh, how do you identify a location where it will be suitable for you to shoot Milky Way? As in the initially, in the beginning of the uh, session, we discussed, we just told that we get to see the Milky Way everywhere throughout the year, but to shoot it, we, didn't, we need certain requirement, like it should not have a uh, high light pollution. So there is an application called light pollution LPM, light pollution map. And likely there are many applications which you can download in the uh, mobile, which gives a idea Wherever we are, with a GPS, it is connected directly and it gives an indication that the place where are you, whether it is having light pollution or not. I'll, I'll, I'll go to that particular in a while. Okay. And second is WhatsApp location stored by FSO friends. Okay. As, as I was telling, so I, we had been to 15 places in the last two years. Likewise, many of our friends had been to many places. And uh, one thing what we do generally is when we reach to that pl place, we store the location in our WhatsApp. So that you now it can be useful for others. So these location share, uh, sharing can be stored, uh, can be collected from our friends. At least those who are in Oman will be able to again uh, go to that place. And Astronomical Society also one of the area, one of the place where we can get this uh, information. I used to uh, talk to our uh, Sheikh Nasser, he used to help us in some sometimes so to get the information from the uh, Astronomical Society of Oman. Yeah, this is the light pollution map app. I'll just explain. Uh, there are two, two uh, screenshots. This is the one I took the screenshot of that particular day at 11.15. This gives, the moment we are open it up, this pin is the uh, location where I am at the moment, at that particular moment. So I was in, Mar um, in uh, Darside, close to Matra. So you can see where I am. These, Reddish color is, uh, it's a light polluted area. It, is, it has got high pollution of light. When it goes to farther, like you know, green, or I mean yellow, green. So these are, are having light pollution, but it's not as deep as a uh, red one. But for a uh, Milky Way shooting, this is not recommended. Even the green is also not recommended. We need to go get into the blue or, yeah, here you can see uh, violet. This is the place where we get a reasonable, less light pollution to take shots, right? This app is, I think it's a free app or even if it is paid up, I think it's hardly it's around, uh, as I said, you $9 or something. It is it's worth uh, downloading this. Coming to this uh, second uh, screenshot, this is the place we ventured, I think in 2018, uh, during the Eid holidays, we all thought, okay, we need to go for a Milky Way shoot. So where will we go? So we have been going to places here and there. So we want to go to a new place. Then uh, our friends assigned the uh, I mean, task of finding the place to me. Then I was just going through the Google map, where to go, where to go, where to go. Then previously our people have gone to Sinau and after Sinau in Mahud. Then I know that there's a road connecting from Sinau to Adam and it, it should be close to the desert and there could be a possibility of less pollution. Then I opened up the map, I mean, uh, light pollution map, and I just, uh, you know, um, zoom, zoomed in, zoomed in. Then I found, okay, there is, this is the area. You can see this is Sinau, this is Adam. So this is the connecting road. 27 is the connecting road. I found, okay, this area could be less light pollution. Then I, uh, we decided to go to Adam and uh, start moving towards Sinau, and we'll find out a better uh, place where there will be a good foreground or whatever. 
and i am sure that there is no light pollution because my map shows that there is uh, there is no uh, light pollution and we went there we went uh, i think uh, mr uh, arvind and nagra not nagra uh, vinish and myself I don't know whether Abdul Aziz was there or not. We were, we went there. It was very interesting too. I will show a few of the photos. Right. Uh, let me move to this other slide. Yeah. Uh, so this is what the location hunt. So now we planned it. We know where we where we have to go for shooting it, and we identified the location. Fine. Now we have to organize the equipment. Uh, I think in this sir. session. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Before starting this one, I think it will disconnect in less than one minute. So we'll okay. uh, rejoin and then we'll uh, start from the event. Okay. 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 So I'll just wait for your. Uh, uh, yeah. Is it yeah. Okay? I think it will oh. just disconnect now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. Now we are into the equipment. So, as I said, you uh, all, most of the people, those who are sitting in this session, are uh, expert in uh, many of the field, especially in the uh, astrophotography as well. So, these equipment list is nothing, but just I just read it out. So, we need a good DSLR or mirrorless camera. We need a good lens, uh, wide-angle lens, preferably or prime lens. And uh, Abdullah has given some suggestion, the uh, lens what, uh, which is far, I mean, better and cheaper as well as Kinon, Samyam and other thing. And, uh, okay. Again, uh, a very good tripod. We need a very steady tripod because we would be standing in a windy situation or maybe, uh, you know, snowing situation, depending upon the place where we are. So we need a really good tripod. And we need cable release uh, or remote shutter release, whatever, or intervalometer. And we also need a good memory card, high speed memory card of uh, uh, having the memory capacity of uh, anything higher than 3 GB or 64 GB, 32 GB, whatever. LED panel, the one which will help us in many ways, because LED panel is a small, is everybody is having it. It can help us uh, painting the foreground with a light. And other important thing is we can use it is as a lantern in the dark area where we are preparing for the Milky Way shooting. It's a, a light, flashlight type situation. And a headlamp, which everybody, most of us will be having it, it will be you know, pitted on our head so that uh, whenever we are moving here and there, we can see the way very clearly. And camera flash, again, it's an optional thing because sometimes we may need that to paint the foreground for taking a better photograph. And other important thing is your mobile phone. You need to have the mobile phone with full battery charge, which was, is because that is very, very useful. And one thing is we will be having these application, which I said, like you know, um, photo fields or uh, uh, light pollution map or many other things. Even all those things will be installed in that. That is one use. And second thing, it's screen light will be very much helpful for us to see the rear view screen of the camera without disturbing others much. And uh, of course, this mobile phone is an essential thing. Uh, in fact, sometimes we need a stopwatch when we are taking uh, the uh, long shot. So even for uh, time lapse also, sometimes we may need that. So that's why the mobile cam mobile field, I mean, uh, fully charged with battery is uh, one thing we should not take it lightly. Uh, two more charging battery because in in the uh, night when it is cold we our battery discharge will be faster so we should have sufficient battery with us two or more always go with more batteries lens cleaning clothes yeah because because of the dust and because of the wind or uh, whatever even the dew in the night the lens can get you know a little bit of uh, dampness on the lens or maybe dust on the lens so we need these clothes we should carry it Masking tab, tissue, all small things. We don't know what we need when we go to a desert-like situation. A picnic chair, we need. Certainly, we will be shooting it and uh, we get a lot of time when it is set to for a continuous shoot or something so we can sit and relax. We need to have it. Props like colorful tent or umbrella. Because when I said, when we take 
uh, Milky Way suit, we need to have good foregrounds. So we can take the natural foreground like trees, rocks, and of course the old building. But at the same time, we can carry certain things, props like you no know, umbrella, colorful umbrella. One of the short I can show, which uh, Srivastoji once we had been to Rusak, he he carried one with him, and a tent. Tent, uh, we get the tent with the green color, yellow color. So that is that will add up a lot of attraction into our uh, frame. This is one thing we should carry with us if you have. Again, water, we are going into a you know, desert-like or uh, lonely places. So we should have sufficient water, nuts, chocolate, tea, snacks, and anything. So I don't need to say what to carry. It's up to you. All of, all of us will be enjoying when we go for such trips. You know? So carry whatever you can and uh, mosquito repellent and pipo. This is needed because when we are going, we are going into a very lonely place, isolated place, and uh, many things. Uh, ants, uh, ants are one of the things which unexpectedly will be reaching to us because when we go, we have some peanuts or something we'll be, we will be carrying with us and we will be eating it. And whatever it is falling on the ground, immediately ant will come in huge number, which we do not notice because in darkness. So this is one thing you should carry, mosquito repellent or pipa or whatever. And another thing is insects. A lot of insects will be there whenever we go because we are going into a mostly lonely place, either in a mountainous range or maybe a wadi or desert or wherever. So scorpions, spiders, ants and snakes. Snakes. These are our things we should expect it. We had our experience. We'll, we'll get into that in a while when we take those photos which, was, uh, which we are taken in the desert and that. Other thing is suitable cloth in the night, sometimes it will be, you know, uh, winter, so you know that you should carry sufficient uh, suitable dress. Shoe, this, this is one thing which uh, Libin reminded me, because we always go with our casual dress. No, shoe is very important. We should have a hard shoe, like probably if possible safety shoe, because we don't know the scorpion or sort of thing, if it is a canvas shoe, there is every possibility that it can bite, it can bite us. So it is better to go with a good shoe. No way wearing chapel. No. Chapel is not at all except only you will get into a dangerous situation and you will make others, those who are accompanying you will also be in a uh, embarrassing situation. So let us take ourselves uh, you know, a little bit of care of us so that we don't trouble others. Yeah. Now we reach the location. So reaching the location on time is very, very important in uh, Milky Way shooting process. Because as I said, we are planning it well in advance and we are making a lot of arrangement for it. But when we reach, suppose most of the time the Milky Way visibility or the raising of the Milky Way or the culmination of the Milky Way will be happening maybe after eight o'clock, nine o'clock, depending upon the duration of the year. So generally, as I, I'm just uh, repeating, it starts from January and it ends somewhere in November. But in January, you hardly will be able to see uh, very early in the morning, maybe just before the sunrise, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You cannot plan any shooting in the month of January. Likewise, in the November also, you hardly get 10 minutes or 15 minutes just before the uh, sunset, just after sunset. So you cannot plan it. So maximum the planning will be happening from March to say September. So March onwards, the visibility starts uh, from early in the morning, let's say four o'clock, three o'clock, two o'clock, uh, likewise. So the general time in June, it will be around 8.45 onwards. So that means you are expecting the Milky Way starting from eight o'clock. So you always will have a tendency, okay, so you may start from here, from Muscat, maybe around six o'clock and you reach there maybe eight o'clock, but you will not have any any foreground known to you, how to plan it, how to frame it, where to stop it. So it is very, very important that we reach the location at least two hours before sunset. If not two or one hour, then only you will get to see how is the foreground, what is the thing you are going to frame in your Milky uh, Way shooting, and where you will place the camera. All those things you can just uh, study and uh, you know, come to a conclusion, okay, this is how we will do. So, my point is uh, making this much of effort for planning, if you do not take a little bit of uh, uh, carefulness to reach the site at least one hour, two hours before, then the effort what you are taking will not be worth enough. So try to reach at least two hours or maybe one hour before the sunset. 
Second is check the light pollution level with the help of the app, which I explained to you. Though we are planning to go to a place after knowing that area is not having much light, but still we can verify once again with our uh, app. So that, so that you are making sure that there is no much pollution further. And the third point, look for isolated light interference, light of mosque, mobile tower, village near me. Because this light pollution map doesn't show localized light which should have happened later. Okay, that means there could be a moment in an isolated, but I, I, this is my experience really. I had been to Koima, seeing the uh, light pollution map, there was no light shown, but when we reached there, there was a mosque very far away from the location, but the tube light was blinking. So it was really making a lot of uh, you know, interference. Like there could be some uh, isolated light, mobile tower, that red, red blinking light will be reaching to far away places which can spoil our uh, uh, shot. So, and village, there could be some village and there will be some village light coming. So all those things we can look for so that we can you know, change our direction or change a place, this one. Other point is scout the area for interesting foregrounds such as old building, dry tree, bar, rocks, water bodies. These are, okay, because we, Milky Way, anywhere we can shoot, the beauty of the photograph comes only when you really have a good foreground in the frame right so you have to scout rightly and find out something to frame it in your photo other point is if required identify one or two or more location for shifting in between because you have one frame you have taken enough photo so it is better that you find out other location where you can move maybe within another one kilometer or maybe 500 meters away so that you get more photos of different uh, framing and, and different uh, foreground sort of thing, which we did when we went for uh, Ashkara sh shooting and uh, Mr. Michael was there. He was suggesting, no, no, we will not sit and stand on one place, we'll go in different place. So this is one of the suggestions which I'm putting it forward. Again, make sure that there is there will not be any interference of light from occasional moving vehicle in the night. So when we go, we always try to settle down in a very close by place of a road by which we came. So there could be an isolated vehicle movement in that area. So you will be focusing the Milky Way and then suddenly there's a vehicle just passing in front of you, in between you and the Milky Way. So that can spoil. So plan in such a way that you are not going to have an interference if a vehicle is moving in between. So place the camera in such a way that avoiding the road. And uh, other point is park vehicle facing the direction of your return. Also, it shall be parked for, for fast evacuation, avoiding bushes, sand dunes, mud, mountain, etc. This is our experience. Many a time we found, we just go and leave the vehicle the way we came and we just jump into the field, set in the camera, that thing, this thing, that thing, this thing. And by the time we complete maybe one o'clock, when we get into the vehicle and we lose the direction, which way the direction we came. It is very difficult. Many a time it happened. Even Abdullah says, no, we went to Sifa. We have been roaming, roaming, roaming almost around 45 minutes to get our way back. So it is always a good suggestion from my side, keep the vehicle in such direction that you just need to start and move in the same direction of the vehicle so that you are in the road. Otherwise you will lose. It is very difficult those times you will not get the uh, navigation rightly because it is it, probably it would be in a very you know isolated place. There could not be any good uh, uh, range of the mobile and all. So this is one thing I'm really suggesting you. And do not park under the tree or the bushes to avoid probable creeping in of snakes, scorpion. This is another thing. So we always prefer to park our vehicle under the tree because we probably will be reaching there around four o'clock or five o'clock. So it would be a little bit sunny. So we will try to park underneath of the tree. Don't do that. Don't do that. This is one thing which Mr. Uh, uh, during our uh, desert uh, drive, uh, I have been told, okay, not to keep. So this, we don't know, we are leaving the vehicle and going to the field and taking the photograph. There could be a scorpion creeping in our vehicle. So it is better to avoid such location and keep it in an open place. Like Other point is be aware of desert snake, poisonous creature creature under stone and rock while positioning the code. Yeah, night, we will be very enthusiastic in shifting camera from one place to other place. Yeah, especially when we are in a mountain range, while we were uh, taking photograph in Justak, it was a very narrow uh, road. One side it was mountain and other side was uh, 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 with a wadi. So 
we have very little space to move around uh, here and there so we were just climbing a little bit on the mountain but we could see scorpion underneath of the i mean stone so we should be careful about it friends are you seeing the uh, screen am i okay yeah libin yeah yeah fine okay yes perfect mr yes. den thank you now the real photographing of milky way the fifth point i will get into that so i am just starting with the help of the augmented reality features of the photo fill uh, or any other app like star uh, star tracker lights look for the direction of milky way in the mobile i'll i'll just explain this in a while so i told the milky way sorry the photo fill app which we have in our mobile we'll get into that how to locate it before that let me go to the second point generally the milky way will be appearing on the southern sky okay so normally the uh, i mean it, it is appearing on the southern sky so we know where the north star and we know where the southern sky so depending upon the season it start from uh, southern uh, southeast to southwest i mean in the early month like january february sort of thing it will be southeast and by the end of the year it will go to the southwest like seasonal changes so in case if you do not have the app locate the polar star between ursa major and ursa minor the last star in the ursa minor trail milky way will be in the opposite direction of the north star the best thing is have this app in your mobile or when we are going in a gang let's say three or four at least one should have this app installed very easy to locate the milky way very easily okay suppose you are in such situation in a very isolated place you know, don't have anything so then uh, try to locate the north star then uh, the milky way will be almost opposite in direction so why we are just uh, uh, looking for this is we are preparing for culmination of the milky way the moment milky way already raised in the sky then you can as well see it. you don't have to worry about it. you can look for the milky way in the sky and then you will see as uh, milky way and you can position your i mean try for accordingly so there is no big thing in this but i'm su suggesting you can have a uh, good planning if you have this app so that you no know, before culmination itself you are ready with your camera then you go on shooting it but nevertheless having a north star known or north direction known you look for the southern sky you will see it okay set the camera and tripod facing the culmination direction of milky way keeping foreground in frame this is what if you have the app you can well plan it and frame it well in time so that you get the i mean suitable frame which you are looking for uh, i'll get into the first point in a while because i have the screenshot of it i'll uh, explain when the screenshot is there with me this is a taking photograph uh, let me just uh, go few of the slide uh, down yeah this is the augment, uh, augmented uh, reality I, i'll i'll take this one see in the uh, photo fill app if you just go into the planning uh, the main screen in that there is one 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 uh, one icon which is known as ar augmented reality if you click that you will you will have one minute you will have this screen this this screen scene this screen scene okay wherever you are your location with these all the uh, what you call radial lines and you can see in the app itself this milky way and you just uh, tilt your i mean mobile in such a way so that uh, how you see the milky way in your mobile in the same direction in the sky you see the real milky way as well okay that's how you you use this app it's very simple to use if you have it okay this is one of the photo which this photo fill people they have taken planning this is the natural bridge it's a bridge which has been created by the nature i, I don't know where exactly is this so they planned it with this augmented reality and this is how they took the photograph okay it's a different matter we will get into that or when we have the uh, photo fill app you can learn it more in more of such things so let me go back to the uh, screen which i have having it so any 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 doubts or any clarification please note on uh, kk or vino i don't know who is doing that so we'll uh, discuss it further on then taking the photograph okay these are the basic thing when we do 
in the milky way what are what are things you have to set it i think these are known to everybody i don't have to explain it but of course those who are not very familiar with it uh, i'm just running through uh, basically in your camera set the white balance to 3200 kilo i mean kelvin or anything between uh, 3200 to 4500 uh, kelvin this is to get a bluish uh, sky like thing so you can change it if you are taking the raw any time you can change it and suggestively set the iso to 3200 i don't know whether i missed another slide before yeah okay i'm into that. Uh, set the ISO 3200 or less depending upon your uh, lens. I'll uh, slightly explain this uh, in a while. And set your uh, image quality into RAW or RAW plus JPEG. Because for somebody who want to see the JPEG uh, while downloading, okay, it is a JPEG, uh, RAW plus JPEG. Otherwise, RAW is enough. Uh, we are on, I always shooting uh, RAW alone. Connect the cable release or intro meter so that you are ready with the camera. Set the aperture to the widest opening. That is 2.8 in case of uh, your uh, wide angle uh, lens or uh, 14 or whatever uh, in the prime lens. If it is 1.4 mm uh, uh, prime lens and keep it in uh, 1.4. And um, the reason being, I uh, will just get into that. Why we need to keep this uh, ISO 3200 or why do you need to keep the uh, aperture to uh, 2.8? All those things will will get in a while. See, basically, uh, Milky Way, uh, it's available in the sky with very very little very little light being, I mean, protruded, I mean, uh, protected from the stars. So you need to capture more light to get a good image of the Milky Way, right? So to get a more clear image, you need to have the widest. Uh, aperture of your camera, whatever is possible, and uh, ISO. ISO, you have different ISO, but suggestively 3200 or uh, 2000 or even 6800 uh, also is okay. So that you now you get you will get a lot of light into your camera so that you get the photograph reasonably in an acceptable uh, exposure level. That's the reason we are keeping it uh, 3200 and 2.8 and that. And we'll again go to the shutter speed in a while. Another hardest part is how to focus uh, when you are in the dark sky, I mean, area where you don't have anything to focus. So you need to focus a star and you won't be able to really see through your uh, viewfinder and uh, many things. So there are many methods people use. Uh, I, I know that a few of our friends, they used to focus it in the daylight itself and set it with a, a masking tab or black tab and then uh, do the shooting. But I have my suggestion, these are the three things which is easily you can do it. One, the first one is focus the farthest, I mean, what you do, keep the rear, uh, that uh, live view is open and focus the farthest star in the sky, okay? And uh, try to focus it with autofocus Right. Once it is clearly seen, and uh, suit, I mean, turn off the autofocus mode into manual mode of the camera and lens, so that you now whatever is focused in the auto mode, it is set. Okay. That is, you already set the uh, focusing of one star, which you are very sure it is very clear. Then you are turning off the autofocus mode into manual, so that you are set with uh, your uh, focusing. This is one way. Other thing is hyperfocal distance. Hyperfocal distance, uh, it is a, it's a technique which is available in the uh, app, which suggests you with your camera, okay, D800 and your lens is 24, 1424, okay, 2.8, with which it can give a distance with which say around 1.5 meter or 1.4 meter or within two meter, it, it gives by its table, it gives, okay, this is the hyperfocal distance. So you can have that uh, distance either uh, approximately with your uh, foot, you can just, okay, three step. So you can have uh, some object in that particular plane and focus it so that you get everything in focus. So this is very useful thing, useful, I mean, uh, table, one can use it. Third one is, this is what generally I do. 
or you you can set your lens in infinity and uh, slightly less than infinity because infinity is a is a is a place which is non existing even at the star it is not in infinity it has got a location so what i do is i just open up uh, my lens to the infinity and i slightly tilt tilt so at at least 1 mm it is less than infinity and i used to get the picture very perfectly so this is what i do but it's all up to you whatever the way you want however the uh, uh, you feel it is comfortable you can do it these are all general things you can um, do for focusing yeah all right then exposure time okay this is the one we are talking about uh, now we know to capture a, any photograph we need three things one is the uh, aperture one is the uh, shutter speed and third is the iso so we have already discussed about iso and aperture which we already set now we need to know how much is the time we need to keep this your camera open for capturing the light this is also one of the important thing as far as milky way shooting is concerned even for that sake even the star shooting or any any deep sky shoot i mean uh, sky shooting is very important okay now how do you come to that point i have to be a little bit fast exposure time is not uh, see it is suggested that the exposure time should not go more than 30 second the reason being is see you need to get the star in an acceptable clear condition so you are you have your camera and tripod on earth and stars are moving at certain speed and in fact earth is moving as all, all of us know earth is moving at a speed of 1600 km per hour that means the star is moving proportionately or whatever i don't know the calculation of it a star is certainly moving we know so if you keep your camera open for more time say almost say 50 minutes or one uh, 50 second or one minute then you will receive the i mean star in your camera but it will be showing a streak it won't be a dot it won't be a acceptable round condition it will be a streak so the thumb rule is you always try to keep your uh, exposure time anything less than 30 to get a clear star in your camera so remember that you at any case you shall not extend it more than 30 so you may have to play in between the iso and your uh, other things to get this 30 second so keep it in that do trial and error method start taking trial shot from 15 second onwards with step by step increment this is one of things you are going early and you are setting it when the darkness reaches you can try shooting the star keeping different shutter speed like in the start from 15 second 20 second 25 second or like this so you you will get you know, around 20 second or 22 second should be ideally okay and after taking each shot see the uh, histogram histogram is the only thing which can help you in the darkness because you won't be able to see a good uh, preview in the uh, live live view screen so histogram will help you if you getting a histogram of such nature then you know that okay you got a reasonably acceptable uh, for image you can process it well and you can make it okay then we go into the uh, exposure time now i said you you can start trial from 15 second and you don't need to go anything beyond 30 second but how will you i mean come to know exactly what is the right uh, shutter speed i need to keep there are certain thumb rule for that this is the one i am just telling exposure time there are one is finder rule and the second is uh, exposure time uh, how it is worked out it is shown there so i'll just elaborate what is finder rule it, it's a thumb rule it, it is nothing your exposure time will be suppose if you are having a uh, full frame camera and you are using 14 24 lens and 14 is the uh, widest uh, opening you are going to have to shoot it then your focal length is 14 so 500 divided by 14 will be that i mean time you are going to use it for capturing the image so this is for full frame camera i'm talking about so it comes 1 by uh, when 500 it gives 35 second but as i said you thumb rule it doesn't need to be more than 35 sec 30 second so limit your exposure to 30 second and you take some one or two shot and see if it is reasonably in an acceptable exposure fine or if you feel it is over exposed then slightly reduce one step down that's it it's only a trial and error with the same 500 uh, rule you can 
do it, it for uh, crop sense. In that case, you have to divide it by 500 divided by the crop factor and the focal length of the uh, lens. In this case, if we are using D7000, then uh, 500 divided by 1.6 is the uh, crop sensors uh, proportion. I don't know what that, what you call it. Into 14 is the focal length. So you get 22.32 seconds. Stick on to 20 seconds. This is how it is. This is how the uh, exposure time is being calculated. But always it is better with all those things, you can take some trial short and see the uh, histogram and uh, set it into that, uh, depending upon your uh, satisfaction. Right. Again, exposure, there is another NPF rule, which is available in the photo field. This is more accurate. As I said, it has got a table in which you have to feed your camera, your lens, so that it gives a, a result to you. So in, in my case, I'm using, suppose, 720, then I'm using this 1424, then I add uh, my lens as 14, 14 and 750 as camera, and it, it gives a result of 18.74 is the exposure time for me. So I just keep it 20. So I used to get a very good image. Sorry. Have a very good, sorry. Keep shooting. And now, uh, now you set the frame and now you set the camera exposure time and ISO and all those things. Now you go on shooting, the, uh, looking at the Milky Way. Frame, culmination of Milky Way and the foreground, take pictures. Remember to take few shots before culmination of the Milky Way itself. View this in composite image while doing the post process. This is one thing which always we forget. Because when we go, you set up the camera before the Milky Way races, it is always better to take few shots of the foreground with the dark sky so that you, know, we can, you will be able to use these shots when you make a composite image of your Milky Way. Sometime when the Milky Way is up, you will not be having details in the foreground. So these uh, initial photographs which you have taken with good lighting and in this case you can go for more exposure time because you don't have a Milky Way interfering or it's not going to matter you. You are looking only for the foreground. Instead of 20 seconds, you can, you can go for 30 seconds or whatever. So you get a clear foreground, which is there in your camera. When you do the post processing, you take out these images and place in front of your uh, uh, Milky Way image and make a composite uh, photo. Sorry for all the, um, okay, a little bit. So uh, I'll just uh, move fast on this LED light and all. You have it, tend you have it. You have, uh, other important thing, what uh, generally we don't uh, take care is the third point. If you have sufficient window of Milky Way visibility, set your camera for time lapse or for interval shooting or start time. Generally, when we go, we always take two cameras with us and two tripods, right? With one camera, we'll be going on taking the uh, Milky Way shoot here and there. And other camera, we set in such a location, keeping a foreground of tree or something, and aiming the Milky Way for a time-lapse shoot. Okay, time-lapse, it's a different, uh, uh, I mean, genre of uh, discussion. We'll discuss it later if we have time. But you can have two things. Either you can shoot interval shooting, keeping every 30 seconds or 25 seconds for each shot. And then go on collecting the shot. So you have around 150 to 200 shot with you, which you can make a time lapse later. Okay, this is one thing I'll do. Uh, uh, again, if you uh, if you have if you have enough uh, Milky Way, and you look for the star trail, aiming the north star. We will get into that. So if you have enough time, suppose in June, July, August, you have almost around five to six or maybe more hours of Milky Way. Sorry. Milky Way visibility. So you can have uh, other shooting happening with your other camera. You don't have to have so, so, that much of concentration. Because you set the camera and naturally that is going on taking the shots. Only thing you see that your memory card is sufficiently having uh, space and you have a good battery installing it. That's it. Other point you have a very good understanding with the fellow photographers. Take care of, not to jump into the frame accidentally. Avoid switching on of your headlamp mobile flashlight and flash, etc. with others are shooting. This is one of the point as a, when we go in a, as a company, we need to respect others, uh, I mean, job also. I found many of our fellow uh, 
uh, our photographers, they are not very, very respectable of others. Because in darkness, uh, see, all will be having their camera in front of them, they will be seriously shooting it. Sometimes you are just switching on your mobile and switching on your headlamp, you're switching on your this thing, that will spoil their entire frame and everything. So you should have a better understanding among us. And always when you are in a desert, see that you are spread out in a different area. So that, you know, even if you slightly uh, switch on your uh, mobile screen light, it is not interfering others. So this is one of the points which as a, uh, as a team, when we go, we need to really respect others and take care of it. Okay, I'll jump into the other one. Uh, this uh, actually we told, uh, this augmented reality, this is how it is seen, which we explained slightly uh, two, three slides before. Uh, this is again uh, location, which also we explained uh, in the previous uh, discussion. This also I showed you. This is how you locate the North Star. Okay, you can see the, the, these uh, these uh, constellation. If you keenly observe in the sky, you can see this uh, sky-like. Uh, I mean constellation, and opposite that you can see the Ursa Major also. So this is the North Star. This North Star identification is very important for star photographers. And even for, I think, the earlier days and all, when uh, for any, any people, those who are traveling, uh, I mean, navigators, they used to only concentrate on North Star. I'll, I'll know what is North Star, what is the speciality of North Star, but just for the sake of uh, telling uh, those who are not having what is North Star. North Star is the only star which stays constantly in one place. That means whenever you look at the location of North Star, that is always there in that particular direction. All other stars are moving. When I say moving, we are moving. Okay, but understand that stars are moving, but North Star is the only one which will be permanently in one place. That's the reason everything, every uh, this uh, telescope or whatever, any navigation instrument, everything is based on the North Star location. So even when we set uh, uh, the stars, stars tracker, uh, that is another instrument which we are not uh, discussing it, we have to align it with the North Star. So North Star is one thing which we need to know about it. Okay, I'll jump into the other uh, slide. Now this is another important thing, packing up and returning back. See, this is one thing we hardly bother, but uh, we really should have a good planning about our return trip. When we go, say, to Stark or maybe Ibri, when we plan it, we, we used to reach there around five o'clock. Uh, wait for one or two hours for the Milky Way and two hours before sunset, fine, everything. But we also should have a plan, okay, at one o'clock we should return. So all should be ready packing up or uh, closing their uh, shooting, uh, this thing at one o'clock and get ready, we should return back. This return plan also should be one thing we should have well in advance. Okay, and what you should keep in that? Always set your time of return while planning, as I already told you give due consideration for safe drying uh, back home. Because when we go to all the way, uh, say Rustak, we need another two and a half hours to come back and we will be totally tired and we'll be feeling sleepy. Sometimes we would not have enough food. So we should have sufficient time and sufficient energy to drive back. So don't stay all the way up to three o'clock and take uh, I mean shooting. And no, this is something we should keep in our mind. Have a check list of item you, your mobile, not bad. Cross check to make sure that old items are stored back in the boot of the vehicle. You may forget a lot of things because when you are in the darkness, you will not uh, know whether you have everything carried back. So have a list in your notepad of a mobile and see that all those things are taken and it is packed in the vehicle and move on. Look for your second camera, which would have set under a tree for time lapse, which happened to me many times. Because as I said, you will be taking a um, time lapse shooting and it takes almost two or three hours for the camera to go on shooting, shooting, shooting. So when we are just packing up, we are packing up the camera which is seen in front of us. Tripod will okay, we'll, we'll, uh, fold that uh, tripod and take the camera what is seen in front of us and you just move. Then only we'll, oh, oh, there is one camera I kept under the tree. We have to run back and take it. So always remember that your camera is already there in the field. Do not throw left out food and um, trash in the wild. Please carry or in a trash bag, which all of us we need to do as well. Um, set Google Mac uh, heading musket so that you don't miss the where proceeding. This is one thing uh, practically we had 
this helped us a lot. As I said, you, we would be parking the vehicle and when you, the darkness is there and when the shooting is over, you will not know which is the right direction. As I said, you, okay, we would be keeping the vehicle in the right direction. Sometimes you forget it, but you don't know which direction you have to move. You move, sometimes you are moving will be happening towards the desert. Deep into the desert, you will land up in a very serious situation. So it is always better to uh, keep your mobile in the navigation. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, putting musket as the destination so that now it gives at least an idea how you should take the vehicle and move immediately. You miss it. It has happened to us. Other thing is, okay, now we have to get into the post-processing. So before that, I think now we'll uh, stop for a while and we'll have a discussion and something has to be clarified. Libin, is it okay? 10, 15 minutes. Now it is going to be uh, 11.30. Libin? 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 Uh, yes. Hello? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. We, stop uh, and, we, uh, have... we can have a quick uh, discussion or uh, at the end. I prefer to be in the end. Okay. okay, then shall I continue with the post processing? Yeah, please. Okay, now we have taken the photo now we are back at home, back home, and now the uh, thing of uh, post processing. So I have some slide which I taken from a, a screenshot of my, uh, I mean, uh, desktop. And uh, if you want really to see uh, how I do the post processing, all, all of you guys are expert in post processing. There is nothing new I can uh, show to you, but still if you so needed, I can look into, but uh, right now let me move on. So post-processing, generally uh, what I do is, generally we won't get a uh, very impressive image in the camera. Uh, this Milky Way, sh which we have uh, got in the camera would not be that great. It will not be that impressive. Especially if, we, if you are shooting in the raw, it won't be very impressive. Okay, uh, heavy post-processing is needed to make the Milky Way stand out. You have seen the photographs of other photographers in the beginning. All the photographs are uh, probably it is heavily uh, processed. It is accepted in the, uh, in the photographers in general. There are enormous tutorials available in the web for processing the Milky Way. These days, getting the technicality of all those things are uh, abundantly available in the net. So one need, need not teach it. Okay, you if you are having any mere interest, you will get everything. Few of the uh, webs which I used to get into is one is Pinterest, Hotsey, and Sergi Remeli. I think more, more, many of our uh, photographers are following him. Photo bills, the moment you subscribe for the photo bill, they used to send a weekly tutorial every uh, once in, uh, one or two tutorials in a week, like. And the 500 Pix, it has got its tutorial area where you get a lot of information, National Geographics, YouTube, you get tremendously a lot of uh, information about how to process it. But the problem is all will have, each each individual have their own way of processing it. Uh, only thing is you should not get confused which to follow, which not to follow. Fine, that's up to you. And uh, post-processing workflow, generally I do, I import the images into the Lightroom and then I open the uh, one image which I, I, I prefer to process in the uh, development module and carry out my basic adjustment like reducing highlight, opening up of shadow, increasing white, avoiding the clipping, expanding black, avoiding clipping, adjust white balance. Now we have taken the, uh, I mean, so, uh, in the camera, we had a white balance of maybe 3,200 or 4,000, whatever. So to shooting your uh, image and foreground, all those things, you can change the white balance the way you prefer it. I think these are things, all of you know it, no need of further, uh, discussion on it. Manage the uh, white balance to suit your uh, I mean, taste. And in the detail uh, drop down, uh, drop down uh, menu, you can sharpen the image and again adjust the lens correction uh, for horizon and vertical and in HSL, of course in Milky Way case, the HSL is a hue, saturation and luminance is not a big thing, we don't need to generally do it, but still if you want, you can do it. In the basic adjustment, you again, get back to the, I'll, doing all this uh, process which I have completed, I'll again go back to the basic adjustment for fine tuning of white balance and clarity and contrast and vibrance. 
and I also crop it into my suitable composition like you no know, 16 uh, is to 9 or whatever. And again, use the brush tool or radial filter to enhance the elastic center or milky. Way. This is the second, uh, third thing which I do. And uh, bring the things in a better clarity and all those things. Uh, and uh, I'll again go to the effect uh, to reduce uh, the igniting. Uh, then after that, I used to export it into Photoshop because I, I get uh, more fine tuning done in my Photoshop. So there, after getting into the Photoshop, I duplicate the layer so that one layer is saved uh, without any disturbance and add a curve to enhance the Milky Way to get it uh, deserving popping up and all. And after the curve uh, layer is added, then I use the brush to adjust it, whether, uh, whether to take it out or to add it or whatever. And uh, if I need if further adjustment layers are needed, we'll add up on um, further layer on top of it. And finally, when we are happy with the image, then uh, merge the layer and enter layer will merge it together and save it in either PSD or maybe in JPEG with the higher high high uh, file size. And uh, for uh, posting in the uh, I mean social media, you again resize it to a lower file size like you no know, 500 pixels or whatever, and add my signature and save the image. That's that's what I generally I do it. I just uh, show the screenshot. If you so need, after seeing this uh, screenshot, if you so need, I can open up one image and uh, carry out a processing very quickly if you so decide. This, I'm just starting with my importing all those uh, uh, pictures into the uh, library. Yeah. So now I selected this particular picture for my uh, development uh, in the development module. So this is the picture I opened it in the development module. Yeah, you can see. And this is the basic adjustment. So here we'll be you now taking the slides to get our desired um, result. So this is half done like, no, I just mold uh, the slides like uh, I uh, reduce the highlight or other, um, whatever, to get our uh, desired taste, I did it. And finally, I added the radial filter to make this Milky Way to get a uh, deserving pop or, or more popping up uh, situation. And in the radial filter, we can adjust it, uh, either clarity or reduce the contrast or add contrast, whatever, whatever the way you want, you can add more clarity on it. That's how uh, finally it has been brought into. And uh, again, I had other, uh, the tendon and sort of things kept on the ground. So I want a little bit of light on the top of it. I added another radial filter on the top of it and slightly enhanced it with more light sort of thing. That is done. This is the, Comparison of before and after. This was the image which I imported to the uh, PC, and this is after the processing done in the Lightroom. Right now, Lightroom part is over. Then I'm uh, in exporting it into the uh, Photoshop. There are many ways you can directly uh, export it into uh, Photoshop if you have a genuine version of uh, Lightroom. But unfortunately, I don't have the genuine version. I have the pirated one, so it won't be supporting too much. Then what I do is I export into the Photoshop directly with all the all the details the way I want it. I can have what is the file says. I can either export as a JPEG or PSD, or I can have the uh, file name changed. I can um, I can identify or uh, which folder I need. This is to store. All those things are there in the dialog box, right? Now, once this is over, I'll just click it. It goes to the uh, for, I mean, normal uh, folder from where I can open these things into Photoshop. So I open it in the Photoshop. This is the two layer I created it. Okay, then I added uh, the next one I can show you. I added uh, another layer with the curve and I did my adjustment, all those things. I just merged it. And finally, I'm just uh, cropping it with my cropping tool, keeping that uh, rule of uh, golden uh, rule or whatever. So keeping the Milky Way in the intersection point of the, uh, I mean, this thing. So that's finally it's over. This is what my uh, workflow. So that's it. Uh, post processing, I just covered it. And uh, if you so need it, I can just open one file and uh, do it for you. Libin, over to you. 
हेलो 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 या या वी आर लिसनिंग नो ही इज कॉलिंग टू लिव इन क्लाउड लिव इन प्रोबेबली मे बी आई जस्ट लेफ्ट हिज सीट फॉर सम इमरजेंसी सॉरी आई माय माइक गॉट सम इश्यूज व्हेन आई अनम्यूट समटाइम वी टेक्स टाइम टू कम बैक okay okay uh, i prefer to uh, have a question answer session now then uh, we we can if needed we can go uh, through the post processing of one uh, photo or we can okay. have another session for post processing itself because it might take some time uh, so let's start with the uh, qa session now okay so i'll 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 go back to my uh, i don't know how to exit this Ah, uh, that's okay. Just stop sharing in the middle. Uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, if somebody want to add something, you can add also, or uh, uh, start your clarification. Just ask. Nibin, I suggest let him keep his uh, screen sharing on in case he wants to show a couple of slides during the Q&A. Okay, Q okay. Yes. Yeah, otherwise it might result in a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I think Adil sir, just keep it. Don't worry. Uh, I, 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 what I should I continue or what? what yeah, yeah. Say? Just keep uh, sharing uh, because sometimes, as Prakash mentioned, uh, we might need to go back to one uh, particular slide. So it's okay. Keep it. Okay. I'm keeping the uh, sharing of the. Okay, okay, yeah. fine. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, please. Ajay ji, thank you so much. It was a beautiful presentation, very lucidly and explained, and very much in detail too. Really, really well explained, and uh, loved it absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Prashant ji. Thank you, Prashant ji. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Okay. Ajay, this is Sunil Rao here. Uh, okay. Is it possible for you to? You said you have shot in various locations around the world. Uh, 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 is it the possible? voice is not very clear. Can you repeat one second, please, sir? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. It was really wonderful. And this is one subject where I have tried only once or twice, and uh, yes, returned back not so very successful. But at the same time, motivated to go back. so you know i really watched this uh, presentation with a lot of interest thanks a lot and uh, there were a lot of elements which i learned however i just wanted to know uh, since you said you have visited these 15 areas if, uh, okay. will it be possible for you to share these uh, locations to us uh, maybe in a different platform not here but if you could later on post it in your uh, episode group or in the panel group No, sir. Actually, in this session itself, I have one more slide uh, in which I will be showing all the fifteen places where we have taken the photos. I need to have some time okay. for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That Thanks is... for that. Thank you. And I just wanted to know this photo fills you pay uh, once uh, or is it an annual fee or what is it? No, no. It's one time only. It's one time installation. You don't. Okay. Have, it's not a subscription for every month. Like no, it's very simple. Okay. It's only something like two real or some two or three real less than three real. Yeah, 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 it's around three point eight six. If he's saying around ten dollars, it will come to around three real nine hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very useful. Not out of. Uh, Sunil, I just wanted to add one more thing in the photo pills. Uh, once you buy the photo pills, there is academic uh, tools also available on the tools uh, on the yeah. that app. So you can okay. learn uh, whatever you want. Or second thing, photo pills having the separate uh, channel on YouTube. so whenever okay. they publish the videos or uh, uh, so you can go through the youtube and you can learn how to shoot the milky way how to shoot the sunset sunrise everything is there yeah mm. yeah correct yeah thank you okay okay i ajay jata sir ajay uh, just one more question sorry bhai ju uh, can i just Finish my query, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah please. Have sir. you used any filters or anything during these shoots? No, actually, uh, Milky Way, uh, 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 as I have been telling in the 
uh, thing is you need maximum light to capture in your camera see you as i said your stars are having very feeble light okay you need maximum capacity or the uh, sort of arrangement in your camera to get maximum light so the moment you add up more filter you are you are reducing the light you won't get a right exposure so the basic thing is you take out everything possible from your camera so we use such of all the auto mode which i forgot to tell you whatever the auto auto i mean uh, the vibration stabilization all those things uh, which has which is there in the camera should be made to i mean to zero nothing no we need basically the camera to function and no filter at all because the filter means you are reducing the light entry of light into the camera so the basic reason why you are opening all the aperture to the highest uh, aperture is though we know there will be some distortion at the end all those things but these all are acceptable when you are paying for getting a better exposure uh, or rather higher light into the camera you are just allowing that to happen so no filter at all yes sir back to oh, my back to only me. question was you know uh, like you said there are some unwanted if you see in the last photograph also which you had shared which you had processed you know there is some light at the uh, on the horizon i think that must be a light of some village somewhere around close by uh so if you have a, my just question i mean i'm it's very elementary i understand that you need to have more light coming in but just to get rid of that if you use some cpl will it help that's all my question to get off those unwanted lights which you find from a village distant or uh this so if you can position your cpl in such a way you know that you know one portion is in a darker uh, this will it, will it help that's all my question no uh, basically the thumb rule is you don't have to use any filter because you have to get maximum light possible whatever you have in the camera i mean in in, in the photograph which you have to do something in the post processing sometime the light i'll show you a few of the photograph in the next i mean uh, this thing presentation uh, those those light will be complementary you have to respect the other light which is coming sometime which will make your image more uh, uh, no attractive and uh, complementary sort of thing okay thank you thank you so much uh, sunil uh, there is uh, filters available for night sky okay you know okay. to reduce the orange cast uh, filters available but uh, people uh, uh, use it very less yeah thank you thank you can uh, control control the cast in uh, while editing okay Uh, so you need to add to your small query over there a cpl will only reduce your exposure it will not cut out any particular lights if it's going to dim your light say normally approximately maybe a stop one and a half stops sometimes even two stops if it cuts your light it will cut off the light in your entire frame not only in a section of your frame a cpl will help you cut reflections a cpl will help you enhance certain colors but it will not selectively cut off certain lights okay. i hope that clarifies yeah, yeah. thank you maybe, maybe you was talking about a kind of gradient filter maybe you know that down portion yeah. of it graduated you know? a graduated neutral density filter from upside down filling it from from down to up probably we can do that in the post processing but as we that you know it is always better to do it and the camera level rather than the post processing i was just looking at various possibilities where you could avoid and reduce the light as you said using a graduated filter or somewhere you know to make things a little more easier that's all uh sorry if i may add like michael just said there are different filters available in the market Uh, which cuts different light intensities like uh, there are filters available for cutting the, uh, the you know the street lights they've got a particular um, light frequency so filters are available uh, filters are available for cutting the led lights you know the light emission from because most of the places they have changed from this um, mercury lights to leds so those filters are also available uh, people do use it uh, and enhance uh, the colors also filters are available I'm sorry to enhance colors in the sky you know yeah i mean you can get the filters available for that as well yeah if you go for an advanced level uh, photography then 
you are trying to reduce as much uh, uh, lens elements as much as possible and then to get certain light frequencies then you add up certain other filters so uh, you know it works both way there are filters available for capturing certain lights and there are certain light uh, filters which is available for cutting those lights so i hope uh, there is there is uh, some help to you to answer the uh, query thank you thank you but these are all generally very expensive <laughs> and not available in the man as always i thought that's Baiju, you are supposed to ask something. No, no, no. I was just. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation, uh, Dejata. Uh, like uh, we feel like uh, those old days. We used to go as a whole group, uh, especially Jabal Shams. Whatever the difficulties, and, and um, even minor accidents, everything you mentioned very clearly. So I was going through that old days. Like uh, we face. like uh, the difficulties with the light pollution from the fellow photographers even we face uh, minor accidents we face the difficulty to coming back um, because of the sleepless those times right. so uh, you know it's all about you almost covered full because it's all from your experience uh, highly appreciate yeah. thank you so thank much you. once again yeah, remember this very very subtle details sajayan has uh, you know just mentioned here that is a very useful thing because person like me is very casual you know i just don't care those kind of stuffs you know rather i would be caring for something else so going with ajayan is you know either you carry all the stuff what you mentioned here or you just carry mr ajayan with you because he will have all these things you know if we want green tea or yellow tea or you know a kind of clothes to you know every stuff is got i mean he is highly prepared and also he he really knows what is he doing and he is going there you know even if you call him for something else his mind is stuck with only this idea so this is i you know uh, thanks for a wonderful presentation you know there are so many subtle things which you don't care but there are at times these are very very helpful thanks a lot it was really wonderful uh, abdul aziz it reminds me of a lashkara trip <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he never mentioned to carry water or any other water or something. Yeah, that's uh, only my complaint. You mean hot water? So such location almost two hours it took for us uh, that night. Yeah. When we will do that again, Mikey? When you we were going to do that again? Really, really? I just yesterday I was dreaming after seeing this PowerPoint. Let me just. Uh, get out of this bloody lockdown mm -hmm. and go to somewhere mm -hmm. you know just to get that fresh air once again oh my god <laughs> uh ajay ji i think pinto has got a query yeah we just check the chat pardon just check the chat window in the center bottom of your screen okay, pinto okay. has got a query he is asking when you focus in infinity or selecting particular star any difficulty no. faced any no, easy my, idea for fast focusing see what i do is i i mentioned in uh, my discussion so there are many ways you can do it but always i do i focus in the infinity and i slightly reduce from the infinity i always keep infinity minus 1 mm in the dial so that i get everything uh, proper uh, i think we okay. need uh, one more uh, few more minutes so just uh, reconnect i will just disconnect now okay. because it's uh, mm -hmm. 1 minute now again let's have one minute okay we okay. just uh, rejoin mm -hmm.
Live in uh, disabled. Ajay, Ajay, your mic, is, your mic is off. I think he's talking uh, through yeah, phone, yeah. so he just disabled himself. Oh. So it was Windows question was uh, my question concern about the, you know, but uh, as Mr. Ajay said, it is a trial and error things. You have to shoot a couple of things and then just check it, increase the screen and check the sharpness and again you focus it, you know, you have to do. It's not that there is some kind of easy way that somebody, you know, got some speed thing. You have to continuously try this. This is what, uh, according to me, uh, you know, there are few people I met in my life. That is one of that uh, Mr. Baiju, Baiju Joes, he's a kind of encyclopedia in this matter. So I was with him. I started this actually with him uh, in Jebel Shams. And, uh, you know, he has shown me uh, this is the, my first time uh, to there are two, three ways. And whichever and you if you're happy with the, the shot, what you get, then you continue. You know, it's as uh, Mr. Ajahn said, it's a trial and error. Keep on doing it. See the sharpness. And the, similarly, I've seen from Dharma also one day when we were in uh, Jebel Shams, he was doing the same. And then after getting a couple of shots, maybe six or seven shots, and you decide, uh, is it okay to go on? Then you start shooting. Okay, uh, sorry, I think uh, Ajahn sir uh, muted. Okay. okay, you can I'm... speak now. It was muted. Sorry. Now, now, can I speak? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, now, uh, these are the few photographs uh, uh, which we have taken uh, in Oman and a few, one or three photos uh, at the end, which is not of Oman. The one what you are seeing in the I mean, screen, it's, it's not Oman, sorry. Okay, I'll just go through it so I know uh, all of you would like to know which are the locations that we can go. Those information are there in these uh, slides. So I don't want to miss that because, okay, we have almost one hour. Shall I proceed? Please. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the first uh, photo shoot we did as a FSO. Uh, it is in July 14th, 2018. Libin took all of us in a, uh, behind his caravan. We went a big gang, like no, almost around um, 20, 25 people were there, like a big procession. <laughs> okay, it was a very interesting journey. We have gone <laughs> all the way up to uh, Rustak and beyond Rustak, uh, a place called Al Kirna. Al Kirna. Okay, so this was the shot uh, which we took, and uh, many were there. I think Plasis, uh, I don't know. Uh, Vinod was there with us, Livin was there with us. Many were there. All we enjoyed the first trip. And ever since we started going for Milky Bear shooting. Okay, these are the few, uh, I mean, few features of the uh, shoot. You can see this is the location, this is the villa, this is the terrain. It was a mountain terrain and it is around 180 kilometers from the musket. And these are the, I mean, exit of uh, this particular uh, photo. And there it was reasonably a good place, uh, light pollution. If I, uh, this is my scale, it's not that somebody else. If it is 10 for 100%, and this is around 7. 7 is the uh, light pollution level of this area, and it's risky. Okay, low risky. It was very close to the main road, so it was less risky. That's it. I'll just get into other one. Afterwards, we can uh, go back and back and forth. This uh, is the place, uh, from the earlier location, another, say, another uh, 10 kilometers deep inside, inside the village, because when we were shooting, the villagers were just passing and they were looking at what these guys are doing in the night. Then somebody stopped, then we explained we are to shooting this night, I mean, uh, Milky Way. They were surprised, uh, they were asked, I mean, they didn't know that something is there, something in the sky. Then they suggested you can get a better uh, view or better uh, darkness in deep inside the village. 
So I noted, uh, along with me, Mr. Chandran was there. We just noted it. So we finished the shooting that day and we came back around three o'clock. Next day, okay, fine. Then I thought we need to go deep inside and see how the sky is going to be. Then it was a, uh, I think it's a working day, Sunday. We went on a Friday and Saturday, every day to, I mean, the rest. And Sunday, it was difficult for others to join because I could manage to take out time from my office and move. Then Chandran joined me, we both, Chandran and me alone went. We went deep inside, it was very, very, very tough road it was. It was wadi and water was there and uh, mountain road. Nobody was there, something happens, I mean, vehicle, nobody to see. So we went inside and we could see this particular spot. Even now I like this spot in Oman because there we have highest or rather the highest darkness uh, which I found. Uh, you can say 8.5 would be the uh, uh, I mean, pollution level according to my scale. And I have gone three times there with many. Even uh, last time when I went, Mr. Srivastava was there with me. A few photos of his I'll show you. So this in general, it's around 200 kilometers approximately. Um, these are the short I took it that day. And this is again the same place I went with Chandran. And this is Mr. Chandran's photograph that day. We took it. Okay. Same, same location. He has used V4 and the Nikkor uh, 1635. F4 was the uh, I mean, aperture. And he kept 25 seconds and found uh, 5,000 was his ISO. This is again uh, uh, Mr. Srinivasan in the same location. We went together and many, um, two, three times we went there as well. So, Again, this same location with uh, with the uh, particular prop of uh, Sri Vastraji. He had brought an umbrella and he made somebody to walk in the Kacha road. This was the only track available, and you see the beautiful Milky Way above the above the mountain, uh, exactly parallel to the you know shape of the mountain. It's very beautiful. I am, even now I get an opportunity. I still would like to go over there. Right. This is again the photograph of uh, Mohut. You can say it is not exactly Mahud, it is uh, away from uh, Srinav and middle or rather another 50-60 kilometer from uh, Srinav. You will have a dark sky because the street lights, there is a road already made, you can say the truck road, there is a new road made which leads Srinav to Dukam. It is known as truck road. It has got street light installed but not energized. That is the reason you get a dark sky there and a lot of good photographs we could take. Uh, many of us, uh, I mean, Biju was there once, uh, Maldram was there, Srinivas and Chandran, many have been there. It's one of the beautiful places. It's, it's a desert life. And this is, a, this is another thing we love there. When we go for shooting, we take the photograph and we have a lot of time with us. We just enjoy sitting, spreading our uh, chairs and putting the mobile, I mean, cameras on or not off or whatever. And under the sky, under the star, we really enjoy the time, you know, which is precious. We never get such time in the city environment. It's only you get in the dark, desert and in the darkness and under the sky. It's one of the shots I thought of showing all of you, right? This is another beautiful place, Ras al -Hat. We used to uh, just go on exploring where we'll go next time, where we'll go next time. Biju was always, you know, behind us. Okay, we have to find out next time where to go. So this is this is taken on uh, October, the same year. So when we come closer to the end of the year, we have less window for the Milky Way. Here we had only, uh, I think around up to nine o'clock, it was visible. And it's, it's a culmination was almost six o'clock, hardly three hours. So here we couldn't uh, scout initially. We didn't have the uh, enough time to go there and find out the time. So we stood in front of a lake or, or lagoon facing the opposite direction, thinking that the Milky Way is going to rise there. So then we found, okay, no, 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 it is not rising yet. We didn't have an idea which is north, which is south and north. So again, we have to run away from there, and, uh, finding another location before the window is closed. So again, another five, six kilometers we, we drive and we found another location. Of course, this is, though the Milky Way is not very prominent there because of the light pollution, but the environment because of the uh, water, lagoon and uh, city lights, everything, it is, it is making a little bit uh, different, uh, I mean, look of the uh, Milky Way. This is again Khoema. The, I had a project going on in Khoema. So uh, when I went for a site visit, it was something like the Milky Way days. So I waited, I, 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 I had completed my job at four o'clock. I waited there with my companion who is sitting in front of the uh, mountain. 
so then then also it is it was it was november so the culmination was early so maybe around 6 o'clock 7 o'clock it will be racing and it will be you know it will be ending maybe around 9 like so we waited and uh, till the darkness and i could get this photograph in fact uh, last year along with michael we went we went close to this place only it is Ashkara. No, though we we call it as Ashkara, it is not exactly Ashkara. It is away from Ashkara, very close to the uh, Koima. We'll have a few photographs of that. We'll get into that. Uh, this this is also a dangerous place because it is desert with one vehicle. One should not go because if you get trapped, I got trapped here. I got trapped here. So we have to go and stay in the road for seeing any badus coming or not to rescue us. So going with one vehicle is not a good idea. This is again the same place. Uh, I think it is uh, my photo. Okay, leave it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, same place, uh, Rusak. It is a very beautiful place. We will get to see the Milky Way very neatly. This is Jebel Shams. We had gone last year, 2019, right? Uh, in July. But it was cloudy day. And these days, Jebel Shams is not an ideal place for uh, Milky Way shooting because a lot of new, new. Uh, camps, uh, tourism camps, and everything came there, so we don't get too much good. Uh, I, mean, I mean, darkness over there. That day we went; it was cloudy as well, but I could get some photos like this. Okay, um, this is one of the photo which I love like anything. This is our master uh, Srivastoji. I think he had exhibited last time also. And when I went to Jabal Shams second time we, uh, in the previous photo, you uh, mm -hmm. there. But I, I just located at where he took this photo. You don't believe he has got a cat's eye. He has got a cat's eye. Because when we go, we don't see these things. Only he, his creativity will be able to identify a photograph of such nature can be shot there. Otherwise, a normal person will not see because these, 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 these stumps are not that high. This stump is not that high. It's very small. Maybe around one meter, two to three meters from the ground. You don't even notice it. But he has got a creative, creative idea to frame it in such a way and shot it. How nicely he has shot it. I love this photo like anything. And this is uh, Biju's uh, uh, star trails, which is, uh, which is shot in Jebel Shams. I asked him to send some photos and then he, he didn't have much photos with him. He sent this photo. I thought of including it. That's it. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the place I told you. I, we scouted and from between Adam to Adam to see now there is a road. I just explained you when I was explaining the other slide. This is a photograph of, uh, I think, uh, this is a photograph of uh, Aravind. Sorry, the name has not been changed. It is Aravind. Sorry, Aravind, sorry. I just put the slide. I didn't, I forgot to correct the name. It's Aravind's photo, right? But that is, a, that is a wonderful place. We had a window of Milky Way from 6 o'clock in the evening to five o'clock in the morning. We stayed in the desert all the night throughout. We reached there around 4, 4.30 like, and we left from there at five o'clock after full sunrise, full day open up. It's a very good place. I, I recommend many to go over there if you have time. This is another photo which I took over there. As uh, I think Sunilji, you were asking about the light. These are the light which was coming from the far away road where the tracks were moving, okay? But it is not bad because these lights are complementary to the whole scene. So there is nothing wrong if you have some lights coming from other place, it's always better to have such lights. Yeah. This is the star trail I took in the same location. This is around 150 short stacked in, uh, uh, in Photoshop. There are many, many software which, uh, uh, there are free software as well in which you can stock stack the shot which you are taken for star trail this is one among that we are not discussing much in much of star trail we can have a, another session whoever is expert in our team can take it it has it has it got its own beauty altogether right uh, this is another place you don't believe we have a place very close to musket this is sifa okay 60 kilometers only from musket okay generally those who are in the musket uh, it is very difficult for everybody to go to the deep in, uh, interior, having 300 kilometer, 200 kilometer drive and all, because many are working here and in, in companies like they don't, 
uh, they don't get that much of time because we don't have many days to select we have only these days a uh, new moon day two to three days before two to three days after that means we have on hardly around five to six days if those days are not falling in the friday or saturday then you you don't you don't get chance to move out this is one of the thing you should notice because this is only 60 kilometers from musket hardly one hour drive but still you get the milky way this is short i think myself and abdul aziz along with my family we only four or five were there we went there we could get this uh, we had a lot of trouble also to come out from there which uh, i explained to you we missed the way we lost the way we were uh, I mean, moving around and round and round to come out of the area because nobody was there to ask the way and all but still we got a almost uh, this is a stacked uh, photograph of three four photo together but we could get in ours the these lighting which you are seeing is the light uh, coming from korea mm -hmm. but it's a bad place to go still it's a good place to go sometime depending upon the season sometime you get the milky way in a different location so you can have a food view but the beauty is you got a water i mean sea in front of you it is very rare you get a sea in framed in the milky way so this is one of the place we can plan having sea in our frame of milky way right the pollution level like i can't reach the five as against 10 and risk is hardly any risk you can go anytime right uh, and this is the three or four uh, elements are there yeah Pardon? All three, four elements are there: water, land, sky, milky way. Yeah, it's very beautiful place. Very beautiful place. One should not miss. It is far. It is not. It's easy, easy accessible. Okay, this is in the Ashkara. We I've been talking. This is along with Mr. Michael. We are gone. He has made a big arrangement. He has made arrangement for staying and all. There is a, I mean, tourism or uh, 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 sort of things in Ashkara. We scouted. We reached around uh, two hours before with a big gang. And we scouted in many places, and this is one of the places I took photo. And the Michael photos are coming. I mean, uh, the ne next next. Yeah. This is my trial. I don't say it's a good photo, but because I try to make a full arch of the whole uh, Milky Way in, I think four or five uh, shots together. We had very less time uh, in this particular place to shoot because we were rushing go back to the other other spot. We located two three spot uh, when we went in Ashkara. One is this one, one is the other one in a desert area. I'll show the photo of Michael. So I had very little time to take, uh, I think, three, four short. I just campaigned it. It didn't come well. This is Michael. This is Michael. Michael G, this is you. Yeah, I <laughs> Okay. So I some of, uh, I don't want to lose it. I don't, though it is not a good photo, I thought of, I mean, preserving it. Right? Uh, it is a desert area, lonely place. Risk is very high. We have uh, our vehicle trapped there. It is good that we scouted initially and went a place where there is a tree. Michael will tell. Only one tree in that entire uh, desert area. We went around four kilometers. We hardly could see any tree. Only one tree we could see. We came there. There was a sand uh, dune sort of thing under the tree. So we, in the daytime only we reached there to find out the location. So two hour vehicle got stuck there. Since it was daytime, okay, some of you could manage and move out from there. And again, in the night, uh, after taking the other shot, which you have seen in the uh, previous uh, this thing, uh, this one, after taking this one, we move to the tree location. I'll show that. This is the tree, only two tree, uh, rather, uh, in the entire vicinity of the desert. And this is Michael's photo, very beautiful. And he has a really processed it very well to exhibit the whole beauty of the uh, Milky Way. It all depends upon person to person, how you process it. So really has got a magical uh, way of processing the uh, photographs, uh, Michael G. Really, I was, okay. I was this has got lucky uh, to get this shot because when the vehicle uh, moved, uh, the light came on the tree. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. There was a uh, road, uh, maybe another one kilometer away. So you got a very good. It's really wonderful shot. Yeah. Uh, let me move on. Uh, this is uh, I say Abdullah is took also. He also has got the light. Illuminated, uh, sorry, a tree illuminated with the light. Uh, the Milky Way is just behind it. It is wonderful. Uh, we were there almost around, uh, I think, seven to eight people were there. All the people were there. I mean, uh, interestingly. Yeah. I'll uh, get into the. Uh, okay, Michael, he has. I don't know how the, you are making this, still, I don't know, but Michael only managed to make this. Uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> it's very beautifully made. It. It's uh, very. Uh, yeah. Michael, you. I mean, can you explain how you made this thing? 
which is normal steel wool okay attached to the binding wire and rotated okay i'm not after, after the fire, uh, putting a uh, lighting the fire correct is very normal steel very wool wash uh, utensil washing steel wool okay, okay. yeah same wash steel wool only the so bartan saaf karne wale hai same thing correct yes, yes. okay Great, great, great. Shall I move? Move on? Yes. Yeah, this is, one should really, you should not forget this location. Can you tell me without seeing uh, what is what is in the screen, can you tell me the, which is this location could be? It is ET. It is ET, you don't believe it. You see, it is only 35 kilometers away from Muscat, but none of us explored it. See, it has got high light pollution, no doubt about it. It has got high mm -hmm. light pollution. But think, we are staying with our family. We have our children and uh, our family members. And they hardly get a chance to see the night sky of the desert. But they hardly get to see the sky as well. Because in the flat, you don't see. And you don't, when you come out, you only see the uh, city lights. You don't see the sky. But in it is very close by 35 kilometers, hardly half an hour. You get this place. And we were, I have gone uh, n number of times to ET with my family, with Abdullah Sis or with Biju or many people, many people. You don't believe we could get this, see, uh, my exit is, it's only 50 seconds because the more you expose, you get more light pollution, you don't get a good report. So uh, we restricted the exposure to 15 seconds and even I reduced the uh, aperture to 3.2. So somehow I got it, but I had to do a heavy processing, but it is worth, you are able to see a Milky Way 35 kilometers away from Muscat is not a joke. Okay, these lights are city lights of uh, maybe Amaria or other places, but it's worth taking a photo. I think once the lockdown situation is over, all of you should certainly scout to uh, ET. It's a beautiful place uh, to venture. Yeah, this is another nearest location. Because I, I'm telling you now, people used to be discussed together and find out new new location, where to go, how to go. I think Mr. Binish told me there's a place in uh, uh, on the way to uh, Korea where probably there could be uh, less light. So we went, uh, we just started moving one day. We went twice there. So there's a village. This is this is this is the, this is the tree and all uh, close to village. Light pollution is there. I I read it as five. Okay. It is better than it is, but it is a good place. We got a lot of trees there and barks are there and dried tree. It's very beautiful. I went with my wife and others are also there. We enjoyed that all day there and it's hardly one hour drive. Now it's 70 kilometers. means it's a, it's a Paka road. There's no much Kacha road. From the Paka road, you have to just get into this area. Uh, if those who want, I can share all the WhatsApp location of these things. Wherever I went, I have the WhatsApp location. I don't mind sharing to anybody who are interested. Very good place easily reachable and anybody can plan it also this is a, this has got a story this is taken in uh, 2016 uh, early morning 5 13 and it was a, a moon day actually the moon set at uh, maybe five o'clock or 4 30 like this is in wahaba sand uh, we used to go for wahaba sand you know this pajera used to take us uh, for uh, sand uh, sand dune trips in the winter season, starting from December to February. So I went there, there along with one of my friends, Shini. He always used to join me for any, any trip of interior. I didn't know that uh, those days I was not aware of how the I mean, Milky Way will be, where it will be coming, and what is the time, what is no Nothing was known to me. I was interested in night sky shooting. I think in the, I started my photography from the film era. Okay, when I, I used to go for my interior trip of my projects in Bukam or in Shalim or in Nimar, I used to take my camera and whenever I stay in the, my accommodation, so I used to shoot star. Those days it was not digital camera, the, I mean film camera, still I used to shoot. Not much good, but I have an interest of shooting it. So in this place when we went, we stayed, okay, after a day's uh, desert trip, we stayed. So we had a plan to stay throughout the night awake for shooting the stars. So we went on the top of a hill, very close to that. We set the camera. This is, I mean, throughout the night we were there. So I don't believe nobody, I mean, early in the morning, I could see a huge stars. I know it is Milky Way, but I didn't know that it's going to come. So immediately we start shooting it. This is that shoots. 
it has taken in Vahaipa sand, and this is the XT. Those days I didn't know that uh, we need to have uh, 17 second or 20 second. It is happened. I used to take a trial, 8 second, 10 second, 12 second. Likewise, I took 10 second. I have got many other uh, shots. So this I sort of showing to you. I took at uh, 10 second, a 5000 uh, ISO, and this was one of the lens. Even I have it is very good lens. It is it's a booty booty lens, but I love it. 17 30, a very good lens. So I got it. So I thought of showing to you because this is one of uh, one of uh, inspiring thing to me, right? That's it. Now these are the photos which I showed you, which is shot in Oman. I I, I request you humbly. I would like to show three more uh, Milky Way which I shot during my Dolomite trip last year, along with uh, Sanad, uh, Tino, and uh, Doctors I mean Sudhi and few others. This is one of the place, uh, the place is known as uh, Paso Geo. It is in Dolomites. It's a, uh, high, I mean, high altitude area. Um, the temperature, if you see, it's a minus, I mean, it's four degrees, not minus, four degree to zero it comes. And um, it, it's a landscape area. Basically, you know, Dolomites is, uh, it's, uh, it's famous, well famous for its uh, uh, landscape and mountainscape and all. It was an evening, it is in August, I don't know, this date is wrong. Uh, it's September, okay, sorry. But uh, the window was from seven to nine. This is the lights of the village down in the valley, but that is complementing the whole scene. And this is the Milky Way shot. Along with me, Mr. Tino was there, he, he also took some short shot, and uh, Sanak took some shot, and Doc, uh, Doc Sunil, uh, sorry, Sudhir, he was not on the mountain top, on the down he was, he also took it. I, I love this area. This is one thing. And uh, this is the famous, famous uh, tree seeming. In the Dolomite, these, these mountain uh, peaks are well known. It is uh, very difficult to reach to that area. It has got 9.5 meter kilometer trekking and almost 10, uh, 110 floor height of hiking. And the temperature is four degree and very few people come there. That day when we were there, myself, uh, Tino, uh, Priyanka, one lady, and the guide, Mr. Uh, uh, Fernando, uh, Fer uh, Federico, and Dr. Sudhir. And Dr. Sudhir and me were weak. We are not that strong to walk the way Tino is walking. You know how strong Tino and how I mean, uh, energetic he is. So we took around two to three, two, more than two and hours, three hours to reach there. It has got up and down in the hiking and that. Very tough moment with all our load of camera and water and uh, all those things. That was the toughest day I had in my life of all my age because 23 kilometers that day we trekked. This is 9.5 all the way, 23 kilometers in my mobile phone, it showed 23 kilometers. The whole day I was trekking and a height of 110 floor like, and with my age, it was something unbelievable. And this is the three peaks what we are talking about. Uh, Trissimi, it is, uh, I think in, in Italian, it is three peak, like it is known as. It is very wonderful, I mean, well famous place. And I know that those days when we reached there, it is a Milky Way day, we thought of shooting. Sudhir was there with me, the V shot. So it is something un, 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 unforgettable to me, uh, shooting a Milky Way in such area, such location, such time. So that is the, thought, uh, that is the reason I thought of showing it to you. And one more, same, this is the Milky Way. Uh, another shot. That's it. And just behind it, there's another mountain which I am showing. This is another, just uh, where we stood, this is another mountain. Actually, in fact, uh, uh, Tino, Sanak and uh, that lady, and they were there on this top where we were unable to climb. It was too too much for us to think of human climbing with all these 23 kilometers trekking. They, they stood here almost uh, around two hours and they took shot from here or looking on the other direction of this peak. Uh, that's it about the shots. Now I think back to you. We can have any any further discussion on it. Living, please. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dim uh, sir. It's very wonderful uh, presentation. Even the photos and the location, and uh, I think it's uh, eye opener for uh, everyone. I'm sorry, I couldn't send my images. <laughs> I just today morning. I, I, 
<laughs> you are reluctant to send it. <laughs> yeah, he asked me to send it, but uh, today morning only I remembered, okay, I didn't uh, send it. So, uh, uh, sorry for that. And then uh, I want to uh, apologize for uh, even uh, coordinating some of the Milky Way uh, shootout. Uh, as Ajayan Sir mentioned, we went to uh, uh, Rustad. Uh, and for me, that was more to uh, try my caravan <laughs> or trailer. <laughs> and I think uh, we were struggling with, uh, with that also. But even uh, I remember Ajayan Sir was talking that is not dark area because I, once I traveled in that area in night for my one of the official trip and I saw that it was dark. So that day while going, he was saying maybe it's not dark and now, you know, using this application, this is what I want to apologize because for all the Milky Way events, I never used this uh, apps and now I, I know whom to contact or what to use and uh, uh, so, you know, even I remember uh, Bilas said, I think we went and then we had to change the location because after reaching there, we used the uh, application and saw that Milky Way is coming uh, you know, behind the mountain and we cannot shoot. Then we again uh, went uh, to another location. Uh, and also, I wanted to add something like, uh, you know, sometimes when I create the event, the people used to ask me, why you need to go so early? And sometimes even we split into two uh, gang. One gang go before the sunset and the other one join. And I remember, Baidu, if you remember, we went to Rasulgat. I think uh, the problem is that there was no signal. So myself, Srivastava and uh, the Aju and all, um, uh, we went before. And then others, Bhavish and the other uh, team, they came later. But we couldn't communicate because there was no network. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They made sure so, there. Yeah. So uh, that that's some of the things we need to take care. Of. You know, uh, we have to go early, scout the place, and uh, settle, and uh, join, go with more than one vehicle. You know, all these things he already explained very well in the presentation. So I wanted to just add uh, uh, this from the event coordination point of view. Okay, and uh, again, uh, don't disturb the others. Like, you know, I have seen uh, in this event, sometimes uh, so we are taking some uh, frame and someone switch on the, you know, their light and it will spoil that. Uh, so all this, uh, again, he also mentioned. Okay, and uh, that's all. Ah, yeah, uh, finally, I was, last year I was planning uh, uh, I mean, when we uh, printed our first coffee table book, a uh, lot of uh, people or uh, my friends and relatives and all, they were, because I sent the uh, soft copy, they were asking me why you didn't have that much, uh, you know, uh, astro photography. So, so I was thinking to have a separate book, you know, dedicated for astro photography because you know, these are the, when I share some of the images, my friends or uh, family, they used to ask me, how you get it? Can you see this naked eye or it's a, some camera trick and all. So, uh, you know, I used to explain all those things and they were, uh, when we printed the first COVID table book, they said, oh, you should have more uh, astro photos. So I wanted to do that. And now in this presentation, which I showed, I think we have very good uh, collection of uh, photos so definitely we will look into that and uh, just uh, you know wait for this uh, lockdown is over then uh, we'll have more uh, you know, shootout for the milky way okay thank you any other questions uh, hi this is arvind here yeah hello yeah i just wanted to add hello. one more location at ep uh, uh, actually, uh, not go to the rock area. After the sea, there is an abandoned ship is there with uh, supporting with the sticks. So that also can be considered as a foreground for shooting the Milky Way because I have taken one photo considering that as a foreground and uh, I shoot the Milky Way from there. So that also location is nearby to our Muscat. Ramji, that location now is spoiled. I think uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's closed now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is exposed, but uh, it's, it's closed. But I don't know whether he, after opening that location, maybe uh, if light, no light pollution or no street lights may be there, then we, we can consider that also as a spot. Yeah, 
regarding Itti, we used to go initially there only maybe when we uh, start our uh, milky way chasing start rails uh, we are ended up to itti maybe it's around 7 years back or something like that itti bandaral kairan like that right, like those areas only uh, only very few of us among from uh, used to go jabal shams for us also that is a first time experience but before we used to go itti only uh, we got a number of shots also from Itti, but uh, after after a long uh, part of organic growth, a lot of light pollution, a lot of camps, a lot of things came up those areas and uh, spoiled. Actually, we got the Milky Way from even from Bandaral Kairan, Itti, but now I don't think so. Maybe like uh, SIPA and all, if we go to cement factory, that area, uh, still there is a chance. Okay. Because when I visited, maybe six months before or maybe eight months, I, one, there was one construction company who is uh, taking some uh, theodolite major, major measurement. So I just asked them, those people, what is going on in that area? So they told that they are building the road from the roundabout up to the uh, fishing point. Okay. Okay, I think uh, I wanted to take, uh, because we have just three minutes left. I want to take a group photo. Can you enable your video? Yeah. Uh, okay. Still some more. I have some free slots in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> KK, <Maybe>. enable it. <laughs> Maybe we can Photoshop later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. One. Very nice to see you after a long time. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think uh, we'll conclude uh, the session because it's just two minutes. Okay. Uh, sorry? <laughs> Nice to see everybody online. Yeah, yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> At least uh, keeping connected. <laughs> okay, I think, uh, yeah, I wanted to add few more uh, location which I have seen uh, during some of my trip, which is very long uh, trip, but, uh, you know, I was planning to go, uh, but uh, one is near uh, Shomia. I think uh, some of you might have gone. There, once I was coming back from one of the side visit, and I saw it was pitch dark. Easily, it was uh, you now we could see the Milky Way, and uh, I Very wanted to. Huh? Too far, Shaumia. Yeah, Shaumia, too far. We should go with a proper planning, even uh, you know, we to camp there. It's a really nice two place. Day. Yeah, it should and, be a two-day uh, event. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It could be a two-day event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and. Uh, Another one I saw, it's, it was near Yankul, uh, you know, uh, from Sohar to Yankul or something. Nice place, actually. It's a very long, straight road and, uh, you know, it's pitch dark. So I think we should uh, explore more uh, locations. And uh, uh, may, please, maybe... I think I need to, uh, ask, uh, Arjan, you have been going to Dukkum. Have you ever tried the rock garden, shooting from rock garden? Is there enough uh, light pollution there? There are heavy light pollution. You won't be able to. Because Dukkum is a 